Hello, you homies. It is your homegirl, Natalie, and welcome to another episode of Vlogmas. Sorry for my messy background. It will just get messier. When I sew, everything around me just becomes chaos, essentially. Also, the lighting is really bad because it's snowing today. So for today's video, I'll be showing you a couple of different sewing projects uh, from easy to difficult, very hard for you to do possibly as gifts or for yourself. All of this really stemmed from me just having so much fabric in my house. All of these are hair accessories. If you're someone that doesn't have a lot of time to style your hair or doesn't like to or don't know how to, a little headband, a hair accessory is a really great way to just spruce up your look without actually doing a whole bunch of work. Or if you're like me and have lost a lot of hair thanks to stress, aging, just the hard water that we have here in Korea, the first project is a satin scrunchie. I've seen these a lot on the room shop. I feel like that's where it really got like super big, at least on the internet or my part of the internet that I've been looking at. And so I was like, oh, I think it would be pretty easy to make yourself so for my first attempt, I folded my fabric and measured 9.5 for the width. I'll be using half an inch for seam allowance and the longest I could get my fabric folded was 19 inches, so 38 altogether, and that's what I cut out. Initially, I was like, I'm not gonna do that fancy burrito method I've seen for scrunchies. I'll just do the regular schmegular one of just folding the fabric lengthwise, sewing a long seam and then connecting it all together. But there was like one really visible seam that was just not cutting it for me. So I had to play around with it a lot to get the seam not as visible. And that was just like too much, all right? So I tried the burrito method with my second attempt and the finishing came out so, so much better. For this one, I decided to cut it a bit wider since I had more fabric to work with because although the first one came out big, I really wanted to go for that like giant, giant look. I will talk about um, how the width and length you choose for your scrunchie makes a difference uh, later on. But yeah, I cut this fabric 11.5 inches wide with half an inch for seam allowance and 22 inches folded for the length. So altogether, it came out to 44 inches uh, lengthwise. Wow! First thing what I'm gonna do, actually, let me go ahead and iron this because it's starting to look a little funky. It is nice and ironed. Now on to sewing the salvage together. Okay, so now this is sewed down. You could iron this, but I'm just gonna go for it. Whatever. I'm on the corner wearing my leather. This dude comes up and he's like, hey, punk. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So we're gonna have this folded in. Other salvage folding in. Doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be like perfect or anything, but the main thing is that you want this to be tucked in together. Then you're gonna fold this end onto this part. So you make sure that when you're sewing, obviously you're not sewing on this or not everything is messed up. Now just straight stitch all the way down. Okay, once we get to this part, you can grip this top layer here and then pull and then just rearrange everything. The most important thing is just make sure the part that you fold it in is just like really squished in there and that you don't sew on top of that. What you wanna do is make sure you leave at least about an inch of space so you can take the fabric out. Now for the fun part, you get to flip it inside out. Stick my finger in here, grab the fabric. I made the, the space a little bit small, but oh well. Take your time while you're doing this. You don't want it to get bunched up. Now you made a scar. No, you didn't. The scrunchie, oh my god. It's actually not as big as I thought it was gonna be. Now what I'm gonna do is get my elastic. I'm using a slightly thicker elastic for this since it's just a bigger a scrunchie. And I'm going to cut this about seven inches. Attach the safety pin to the elastic and I'm gonna weave it through. We did it! Now what I'm gonna do is sew this together and then we're done. Now all that is left. So with this little hole, I'm just folding it in, trying to make sure it lays a little bit flat. And then I'm just gonna sew a top stitch on it. Wow, that was a really bad job. <laughs> Oopsies, but that's fine because I'm okay with that. Oh my god, this is so huge. Let me see the... <laughs> the red one looks so small compared to this. 
I will say though, this 9 by 9.5 by 38 amount of ruffles is like, it's pretty ruffly if that makes sense. While this one is, but there's definitely some spaces. And I think the reason is because it's so big. So I think if I were to go wider, I would have to go even more, add in even more length and then it would be more ruffly. But, but she's so cute though. I'm very happy I made them. <laughs> Aren't these so cute? I really like wearing my hair in a low ponytail, but I think it always looks so plain. But with these, it doesn't. What I really wanted was that the scrunchie to show when I look straight ahead. It's a weird request, but yeah, that's what I wanted. Oh my God, cuando me pongo mi pelo así me veo exactamente como la Teresita del fondo de sitio. If you know, you know. <laughs> exacta, exacta. For our next project, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a bow. When I did my fashion week video, I had a lot of people ask me like, how do you make a bow? And I'm like, oh i didn't think that would be something that want to know but there are some peeps that do so this is how you make it it's really really super duper easy okay to make a bow what you're gonna need is just a piece of fabric fold it over and sew down the line this is actually the giant bow that i made for alvi and i was just thinking like you know what i already took photos with it it's already the second year using it let me just make something else with this fabric that's why this thing is already sewed down so this is really really long so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, cut it i'm gonna make two bows out of this put this here Flip it inside out and now you need to sew the ends together. So you're going to fold it right sides together. Basically the side that doesn't have the visible seam. Yeah, fold that facing each other, right? Does that make sense? I think you guys understand what I'm saying. And you're gonna sew a straight stitch down the edge. So the reason why you want to sew the line where the seam is showing essentially is because when you flip it inside out you no longer see the seam and then when you go ahead to scrunch it up you don't see anything and everything looks perfect so the next thing that we're going to do is just get a piece of scrap fabric i have this right here that i'm going to use just wrap that around approximately 11 centimeters i'm just going to do it to 14. Okay, for reference, mine is actually this is 14 and a half by 10 centimeters. So, first thing I'm gonna do is just sew these two pieces together. Now that the piece is done, we're gonna scrunch up the bow. It, there's no right or wrong way to do this. And then you're gonna wrap the small rectangle around the center of the bow with the visible seam placed in the center. From here, you can hand stitch this together, but I'm gonna try to use my machine instead. When you're done, you can cut off the excess and then flip the band so you won't see any seam. Everything is beautiful and perfect. If you're sewing this in place, don't cut the length off before you sew it down, okay? It's gonna be a lot harder because the fabric is gonna pull or curl inwards so if you have a lot of extra fabric lengthwise like this it'll be a lot easier for you to sew to sew to sew the band <laughs> and I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this too so now you have this all you have to do is just flip it inside out boom seam is gone and there you go now you have yourself a cute little bow if you want you can add in the tails but i'm not going to do that because what i want to show you guys is that you could use this one gift and make a couple different options so first thing uh, you could get a thin headband and just pull it through boom look at that how cute or you can get a clip and then they can just clip it on the heads like that. This one might be a little bit too small. So another option, if you have a duck clip kind of situation, you could also put that in. But yeah, it makes for a really, really easy, really versatile little piece. So it all depends on what it is that you want to do and you can do that. Let me try this on my head. Oh my God, this looks so cute. I'll show you in a B-roll shot, but it looks so cute. <laughs> you can wear this however way you'd like. I think because of how thick this bow came out, it looks really cute when I have my hair up. I can wear it in a headband or clip it onto my ponytail. Because I was working with thick velvet material, my bow came out a little sturdy, but if you're working with like satin, it'll lay flat all the way. 
For our next project, I was really inspired by this headband. This is really what like essentially started it all with like me really being into headbands all of a sudden again. This is from Versed and they used to sell this in black and pink and you could like buy it separately, but I think now you need to purchase like a certain amount of products and then you get like a black headband for free. Yeah, I wanted just more headbands that have like height and volume to it. I think that just looks really good, at least like with my face. So um, I wanted to make like this ruffle kind of headband. So let's go. This kind of starts out like the scrunchie. You're gonna cut a long strip of fabric. For reference, mine is 19 and a half inches folded. So 39 inches total, but seven and one quarter inches for the width. So now you're going to fold it lengthwise. So it'll be a long folded strip. We need to now make the tapered part for each side of the headband. So from the raw edge, you're going to measure an inch down the width and eight inches lengthwise. Once you mark it, connect the dots, cut it out with scissors or a rotary cutter, and then just do the same for the other side. Make sure again, not to cut the part where it's folded, but the, the part where it's, you know, raw edges, people, raw edges. <laughs> to the other side. Next thing you want to cut is another piece that's going to be 15 by 3 inches. Here I'm just cleaning up my edges, you know what I'm saying? Um, just because I didn't want to have like a wonky ass little rectangle. I want to make sure it's nice and neat. Oh! Damn. My hand did this, no! Okay, we are just rolling with the punches. I just ironed it. I'm just gonna sew it. It's okay. I'm just gonna sew it to as close as I can. Okay, so going back to this, now we're, what we're going to do is sew a straight stitch along the edge. Give yourself some type of seam allowance and I'm just gonna go ahead um, and sew this down. It's your All right, I did two stitches, two seams, two lines of stitches, just cause this was fraying really badly. But anyways, that is what you have. Now you get to do the fun part and flip it inside out. It's like a magic trick, woo. Okay, now here comes the fun part. You're gonna weave this through here, which right now I just realized there was no need for me to actually sew this at all because it's going inside. It could have just been a wide three inch. <laughs> Band! Oh well, that's fine. It is what it is. What's done is done. And now let's have some fun. <laughs> now we have this. Isn't she pretty? But you wanna make sure that the side where the seam is, you don't want that to be seen. Just double check your stuff. Now what I could have done is made an additional piece and make it like an elastic. Okay, I'm gonna give myself a little opening. Ooh, she cute. She really cute. Look at that. Boom. So what I'm gonna do is just sew it here and then I think I'm just gonna fold it in. Fold, fold, fold. And we're gonna be good. So, so here and so there. And um, make sure that your headband is inside already. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do to hide this is I'm just folding it in. I don't know, kind of like, you know, how you wrap a present. Ta-da! And then I'm just gonna hand stitch it. I think it should be okay. Okay, this was what I sewed. At some point I accidentally sewed in my hair. <laughs> don't worry, I took that out. Now we have this, I'm so excited. How freaking nice does this look? It's so good. What I love about it is that you can scrunch down the ruffles and have more of a low key ruffle headband, or you can lift it all the way up for maximum height. Both ways look so good and it really reminds me of a flower crown and I am so here for it. So now we've gone through like the super like pretty easy stuff onto the difficult, you have to do many times, a lot of work, a lot of this and that, but if you just stick to the end, it will look so, so freaking cute. So the first one is a puffy headband. Now I did a couple different versions of this actually. And again, definitely inspired by this. So we get to our next project. <laughs> it's so funny because I'm filming 
all of this like meh, 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 meh. So this is actually the last thing that I'm doing, but this isn't the last thing that you're watching. Anyways, um, and now we're gonna get to making a padded headband. What I really wanna do with this one is actually add in some sequence, sequence, sequenced? Sequin dress, I think is what you mean. I say sequence dress. This was like the second prototype that I made. The first one I made with batting instead of actual foam and a take it away <laughs> so this is one of the first prototype headbands off of this guy I mean as you can see it's not as big as what I wanted it to be but she still looks cute how I did this is just with batting I cut out like a couple layers just to get like the base and then from there I rolled up some batting stitched it together put it on top of here and then made the base for it but anyways this is also one other little option that you can do if you have batting instead of craft foam but I'm gonna do to spice the substance I already have this I'm going to put some pearls. I have a lot of different pearls and I'm just gonna put different pearl sizes on this, so. I added in the pearls. It looks really cute. I'll show you at the end. But I have this one and she is very cute. But I'm wondering, instead of just rounded like a little halo, I was like, what if I have it like out more and then like this? I, that could look extremely stupid or look okay. If you have craft foam, that's definitely best, especially for a padded one like this. So this craft foam that I have is pretty thick and pretty sturdy. This craft foam is about two inches. I keep saying craft foam, but it's actually like upholstery foam. So that's pretty thick. Pretty thick, 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 yeah. <laughs> what you're gonna need is a thick headband. I just grabbed this from a Daiso. This one is an inch and a half. I think I did write down like how big this one was initially because it obviously gets squished down. How much did I cut last time? Oh, I know how much. Oh, I cut off about two inches. So I will actually cut off the same. I'll cut off another two inches. This is the side where I already cut off. I'm gonna go with an X-Acto knife and uh, cut that up. You definitely wanna work with stretchy fabric. Wouldn't try it with anything that doesn't stretch. If it's stretchy like every way, that would be best. The fabric I'm working with only like stretchy one way. So that was a little bit more tricky. When I did the, the green one, that was a lot easier to do because it was stretchy either way. So it didn't matter which way I cut it. Welcome to this workstation do is just mark two inches i'm gonna put some weights on this also so when you're cutting this what i found with your exacto knife you just want to go like like really small like instead of trying to do that let me try to just do it this way but yeah no oh wow that's horrible <laughs> That's fine. It's okay. See, the first time I did it, it was really good. This time, I think because I, I tried to just cut it this way and then I went back, it kind of fucked up the groove. So anyways, you want this. Now you have this giant piece of craft foam. Mine is two inches by two inches. And I know this looks giant. Imagine like this is your headband. Like boop, you're done. First time I did it, I was like, oh my God, it doesn't go all the way. It's because this is so thick. That's why it doesn't actually curve down. But the more that you shave, 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 it's gonna have more room to move. I want to make sure I get the middle. I'm just marking it. And then we're going to start carving, which is the fun part. Word of advice though, the top side, you want it to be flat. You don't want it to have any little grooves or anything because once you put it in fabric, you're going to see all of that. So at least make sure that your top side is untouched. So whenever you're cutting, you want to cut it from the inside because that's going to get squished down and that's fine. You want to shave off little by little, but make sure that your ends are a little more tapered in. Marked where the center of my headband is, so I'm going to mark the center of this and line it up. There's a tiny baby bit left that I need to cover. I'll carve a little bit more off of the sides to help it. And I got a little bit closer and I think this is going to be okay. So now I'm going to glue this down. Oof, this smells so bad. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna dry my hair. Hello, it is me with drier hair. So now what you're going to do is the even more fun part is carve out this whole thing. The first time I did it, I did it right to the actual headband, but I'm gonna try to see what kind of difference it makes if I just give myself like a baby bit of cushion. I 
have my little carved piece. Now we're going to move on to the fabric. Um, okay, how I tried to explain this was so freaking confusing because I was also confused, <laughs> even though I did this twice beforehand. So let me show you here, okay? First thing you're gonna do is measure around your headband, like including the foam and everything. With that measurement, you're gonna subtract about two centimeters. And yes, I'm going back to the metric system because it's easier to use for this project. So subtract two centimeters because you'll be working with stretchy fabric. Fabric. on a piece of paper you're gonna mark that out so for example mine was 52 centimeters so I marked 50 centimeters and then marked one centimeter for seam allowance on both sides back to the headband you'll measure the circumference of the center and of the end now with those numbers you should divide it by two because when you cut this piece your fabric is going to be folded so if it was 14 centimeters now it's seven centimeters but what you should also do is subtract another one to two centimeters this will depend on how stretchy your fabric is really i didn't actually do this um so this is where it got wonky for me <laughs> the first thing to get wonky for me okay so mark those also on your paper and then just connect the dots. Also add in your seam allowance and now you have your template. This template is good if you're doing like a regular padded headband, but because I was trying to get mine a bit more square-ish looking up top, I took the measurements of the center and the end along with the middle of that and then the other middle right here. I don't know how to explain this, but there you go right there in your face i hope you get it <laughs> with my measurements i divided that in two and marked it down on my paper here is where i messed up because i didn't subtract an additional centimeter from those measurements so my pieces ended up being far too big for my headband um what i ended up having to do later on was just cut down the width little by little by sewing it multiple times and just trying it on the headband until i got the final fitting essentially actually the final form that i got for the headband ended up being two centimeters less of the folded measurements so you can also mark your template by the same by taking two centimeters off your folded measurements if you're working with very limited fabric though i guess it's always better to go and adjust your seam rather than having to cut out a whole new piece but definitely at least mark it one centimeter less I really hope this makes sense. This is the best that I could do. My next challenge that I forgot was that I needed to cut out two pieces of this template because my fabric was too sheer and you would see the foam and a headband come through and that's not a cute look. So yeah, that added to this just being just more work all around. Also a thing to note when you're cutting this, if you have stretchy fabric that's like stretchy whichever way, it doesn't matter which way you cut this, on the grain, not on the grain, bias, whatever. And this chick comes up to me and she's all like, hey guys, Aren't you that dude? I'm like, yeah, whatever. But for my fabric that was only stretchy one way, I had to cut it where the width of my template would be stretchy because this is going to have to stretch over the foam. So it needs to stretch at least width wise. For my first attempt, I did it so that lengthwise it was stretchy and it did not work. <laughs> so just note that if you're working with fabric that is only stretchy one way. Oh. Gotta change the needle. So I'm using this stretchy thread. It's like, it's what you use for stretchy stuff, swimmer stuff. I know my sister uses this a lot for like her bralettes, but you don't have to use this. Just because I have this, that's why I'm using it. Also because the fabric that I'm using isn't super stretchy. So at least with this, it kind of helps to give me a little additional room. With the green one that I did, didn't have any type of stretchy thread and I just used regular schmegular thread and it worked just fine. Because I had to make two pieces, I first sewed both of the pieces together. Finally, we get to the enclosing part. Oh, so happy. This took a while to get here because I had some problems. Anyways, so what you're going to do is fold it in half. You want to sew down the end, but yeah, you want to leave like this much of space right here to flip it inside out and then you could place in it your headband. Oh my God, I'm so excited. If you got a cheap iron like me, to get the thread to loosen up and lay flat, just spray some water on your fabric and then put the iron on top. And now you got nice clean lines. <laughs> oh yeah, and then from here, you're gonna flip it inside out and try it on your headband. So from here on out, it's just gonna be sewing, fitting, sewing, fitting, sewing, fitting until you get your most perfect fit. It's decreased. I mean, yes, we still have all of this, but I don't feel like going back to the sewing machine and trying to figure it out. It's good. She good. I mean, I could go and sew it one more time. 
All right, one last time. It fits a lot better. I could go in a little bit more, but that's it. That's it, girl. I gotta get going. Stitch this up together. And then the next thing that I wanna do is give it a little bit more pizzazz. So, so I have a bunch of beads and stuff that I'm gonna put on it and then, yeah. The pearls, oh my God. As Janet called it, a wreath for my head. I love how the different sized pearls made it really fun. I also added in some clear beads and this looks so friggin' cute. Onto the main start of the event. Hold on, let me just scream over here. Ah! How cute is this? It's like festive and glam and also reminds me of a Homer Simpson pink glazed donut. It's so amazing. She took five of it and a day, but I love her and I've been wearing her nonstop. Oh my God, this is the headband of my dreams. And now because I am that type of dog mom, with my first failed attempt, I made one for Alvi. I just stuffed the band with cotton stuffing, sewed that bish up, and put on sequins and beads. He looks so cute and over it, but in this house, it's either get dressed up or get out. <laughs> and our last project. Whew, okay, so this one is gonna take you the longest faux motherfucking show. Okay, I saw this also on the room shop. I was like, oh, that's really cute. They just used their scraps from their satin scrunchies. And I was like, I have some scraps here. That should be easy. It took me a whole day to do. So just uh, FYI, all I have left is this scrap of fabric. What I'm gonna do first is actually iron this cause it's pretty crunchy. Decided to make my checkerboard uh, three inches by three inches so that I have at least one inch of seam allowance to sew along the edge of the square and it doesn't get like too small. So first iron. Ironing done. Now we're gonna go ahead and map everything out. First I cut off the selvage because it was bunching up the fabric and then I started to map out my squares. This took a really long time to do because I was obsessing on having it perfect. <laughs> and I just wanted to use up all of this last piece of fabric as best as I could. It was really crucial that I didn't mess this up, so I made sure to put some weights on it and I just kept a very steady hand because we were not trying to cut something wrong, you know? <laughs> and now we did this all over again to the other fabric. <laughs> it's a new day, I have my pieces here. I'm going to now pin them down all together. I did it exactly the two, the point two seven inches, but that's just one. So onto the time lapse. <laughs> Woo! Wow, that took forever. She coming alive. Girl, I do not have a wooden clapper, so yes, I use my stool instead. <laughs> oh, it's wrong. Uh, look, my first little baby square. This took such a long time, and now I need to do the rest. Oh my God, this is so labor intense. <laughs> so realistically, there's no way I'm gonna finish this part for this video and I need to have everything done by today. This is taking forever. All I have is this. All of this is fraying. I have an additional purple piece. So I wanted to lay that on there, cut out the shape, put it together, turn it inside out. A thing to note, because I'm using pins on satin fabric, when I sew it down, the fabric keeps moving so pieces aren't lining up perfectly. So I suggest using these type of pins instead. Turns out my mama did not raise no quitter because I'm still going. With every corner piece, I just quickly just stitched them together, made sure that once I folded it out, they matched up. And like, girl, they doing it. They really doing it out here. Just stitching these two pieces has been really helpful and it's been making the process a lot faster because I don't have to go back and seam rip anything. Oh my God. It looks so motherfucking good. We're gonna keep on going. Wait, Albie, no, please. These are my pieces. Please, no. There's Albie ready to ruin it all. And these are my pieces. Yay. Albie, please don't ruin it. Please. <laughs> God, I can't believe like I'm here. Oh my God, I'm already basically done. I'm gonna go ahead and add in all these pieces together. I didn't want to run into having to do any like corner stuff. So I'm putting them together like this because I don't wanna have to deal with the corners cause I'm scared. Ironing stuff took forever, but I just ironed these two. I still have to iron this, but this looks so good. Oh my God. I'm gonna end up cutting, chopping this right here. <gasps> Oh my God, y'all, I'm so excited. I 
I am so nervous to see how the lines come out. So you could see it first. <gasps> it's like nearly perfect. Nearly perfect. Natalie, you did that. I did that shit. I shouldn't probably throw this in the air. Like, I just don't care, because I do care. I did the last piece to this checkerboard puzzle. This looks professional. Granted, look at the back. This is all I have left? No way. I thought I had way more. Oh my God. Option two is have the back be red, but then I'm like, a blood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to make my triangle, I cut it diagonally, but I did it right at the center of the squares um, when I really should have given myself some seam allowance. So don't cut right on the edges of the squares. Just cut like, you know, I don't know, a centimeter or two past that. This is my piece of fabric that I made. Look, and we tried. Now I'm going to put that together with the little triangle piece and hopefully we're all goody in the hoodie. Where's the camera? Here, we're all goody in the hoodie. <sighs> To get the corners pointed out, use like a nail file or something that has a dull edge because I use my seam ripper and... I just made a hole in this. I sound so defeated, but I finished Albies. I have only this much of fabric left, but I think we can make some magic happen. The professionalism. Oh my God. Wow. I am blown away by me. <laughs> the final triangle came out to the length and width of 21 inches and the hypotenuse, wow, I haven't said that in a long time, is almost 27 inches. It was just the perfect size to knot the headscarf twice to really secure it. I love the color scheme to this because it's not just like white and another color. Color. It's really unique, but what makes this double the fun is that I made one also for Alvi. I had to really play some sewing Tetris to get enough pieces for this, but it worked out and he looks great and I look great. So we look great. Yay. <laughs> Alrighties, and that is it for the video, homies. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm so sorry about this setup. I feel like it looks so blah, <laughs> which sucks because these are so cute. That is it for the video. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're safe and warm. Hope you're blessed and not stressed. And that's it. Love you. Bye.